Hello and welcome to Vector Touch Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak, and today I'm going to show you keyboard shortcuts to save time whenever you work with typing in design. In this tutorial, I collected lots of keyboard shortcuts and features that can save you a lot of time, and hopefully these techniques will improve the way you work with InDesign and save you time and effort. First of all, I would like to talk about Story Editor, which is a very useful feature in InDesign. And this is specifically useful whenever you have text and images together in an InDesign document and you only want to concentrate on the text itself. So in these cases, you can just press Command Y or Control Y whenever you have a type area selected and then InDesign will open Story Editor for you. As you can see, this text here, which is set in two columns, will be visible normally without columns and I can see exactly what paragraph style is applied to it as well. Here it's visible on the left. The advantage of using Story Editor is that even if I don't see the end of the text, so for example, like now I just reduce the size of this uh, whole text frame and I can see the text can't fit into the text frame, if I press Command Y, I can still that see that text, the overset text, and Story Editor exactly shows me what is the last character of the visible text and after that how many words do I have to fit in into this text frame. So this is one thing that can be very useful and save you time whenever you work uh, with type. And another neat feature in InDesign is that if you have something selected, let's just say a word, in the layout view and then you press command Y to uh, go to story editor then you can see the same word selected and vice versa if I select something here and press command Y it will go to the layout view that's quite useful feature now whenever you have your cursor in uh, the type editing mode you might find it difficult to move around just so change your view because usually a keyboard shortcut for that is the space but if you have the type selected, space is obviously going to add a space. So it's used for typing. In these cases, if you hold down Alt or Option, then you get the same feature as uh, you would get normally, the hand tool. So you can move your layout around by holding down Alt and still be able to continue typing. There are lots of things that you can do with keyboard shortcuts while you are typing. Obviously everyone knows that right and left arrows are to move around uh, in, in, on a line and up and down arrows is to switch between lines. But there are other useful features like holding down command or control and right and left arrows will jump between words. So that's a much faster way to travel across your layout. If you press command up and down arrows that will jump between paragraphs. Even faster way to travel. If you hold down shift while you are pressing right and left arrows, you not only travel, but you also make selection. And if you add command to this, then you can go holding down command shift or control shift, left and right arrows, you can jump between words plus make selections. If you do the same thing, a command shift or control shift, but up and down arrow, then you can quickly make selections of paragraphs. If you want to select lines, you can just hold down shift and press up or down arrows. You can also use your mouse to make selections quickly. So for example, double clicking on a word will select that word. Triple click will select the line where you clicked. And if you click four times, you will be able to select the whole paragraph. Clicking five times can select the whole story. And in this case, as you can see, this text here on the top is also part of the story. So that's why it's getting selected. But instead of using five clicks, it's faster to press Command or Control A, which is also select all. By the way, another useful thing, if you want to deselect everything, you can press Command Shift A even when you are not editing type, but let's just say you have some images selected and maybe a couple of text frames. So let's just say I'm going to select these here, these three. And if I press Command Shift A, it makes sure that I don't have anything selected. This might be very useful because sometimes 
in InDesign, you want to apply a change, but you don't want to apply it to a selection. Now, how can we change the font, for example? If I select a paragraph, I'm going to use the four times click to select this paragraph. And uh, if you have the character formatting options on your control bar, which by the way, you can always switch between this A and P, our paragraph sign. So you can select the character formatting controls. And in that case, if that's selected, you can press Command or Control 6 to select or highlight the font selector. And let's just say I want to change this to a different font called Tryon Pro. Then I start typing T R and I press enter and it's already there. So a quick way to make a change to my font. There are keyboard shortcuts for the different styles like bold, italic or underlined. Uh, so we can always add these very quickly by holding down command shift or control shift and uh, all the keyboard shortcuts will need these control keys. So we can use command shift B to set something in bold. Command Shift I to set something in italic and Command Shift U to set something in underlined. And these features are added, so you can always remove them with the same keyboard shortcut. You can also change the size of your font with a keyboard shortcut. So let's just say I'm selecting this paragraph here and using Command or Control Shift full stop to increase the size and comma also with Command Shift uh, to decrease the size. Now the increments of this is def by default two points, but you can always change uh, that default increment. If you go to the preferences, by the way, the keyboard shortcut for preferences is Command or Control K. And here in preferences, if you go to units and increments, here you can find the keyboard increments and this is where you can change this default settings. So the size and leading is set to two points. So it changes by two points uh, with every keyboard shortcut. And there's the, also the baseline shift, which you can change and kerning and tracking, which I'm going to show you. So let me just go back. And uh, I would like to show you, apart from changing the size of your text, you can also change uh, the case of your text. So you can create uh, uppercase or all caps by pressing Command or Control Shift K. And pressing the same keyboard shortcut again will set it back to normal uh, lower case. I highly recommend to use this feature whenever you want to use uppercase or all caps uh, text instead of pressing caps lock because this is an easy way to change it back and forth. There is a way to also apply a specific paragraph style or character style to your text using keyboard shortcuts. So let's just define a paragraph style first of all. I'm going to use bold text and uh, I'm going to reduce the size, so make it smaller, something like that and maybe add a color to it. I mean, change the color to blue. And if I want to save this as a paragraph style, all I need to do is to go to paragraph styles, click on new, and then double click on this, and maybe just name this test. So I call it test. And then here I can define a shortcut for this paragraph style. You have to use the numeric keys and uh, you have to hold down alt. So alt, one, for example, can be a keyboard shortcut. And I'm going to click on OK. And now if I select another paragraph like this one, I don't have to select the whole paragraph, just click in it and then press Alt 1. Then it quickly changes to that saved paragraph style. Now let's talk about kerning and tracking. It's the same keyboard shortcut, but we call it differently depending on what, on what you are doing with it. So if I click between uh, two characters and hold down Alt and then press right and left arrows, I can change the distance between the characters. So I'm not adding a space, I'm just changing the space between them. And this is called kerning. It's especially useful when you have all caps uh, text or you have a big title and you want to make sure it looks good. Um, but you can also use the same keyboard shortcut for a whole paragraph. So for example, this paragraph I can select and then hold Alt and then press right and left arrows. 
this is the way I'm changing the distance between each of these characters in the whole paragraph. In this case, we call this tracking. Of course, these features can be found here in the character formatting controls as well. So this is, for example, the kerning or tracking feature. And remember, you can change the increment of this as well from the preferences. Changing the leading can be achieved also uh, with a keyboard shortcut. If I hold down Alt and press up and down arrow, I can change the leading, which is the distance between lines. If I hold down Alt and Shift and using up and down arrows, I can change the baseline or it's called baseline shift. So for example, if I select this word and hold down Alt, Shift and up arrow, I can move this out of its line and that is what we call baseline shift. And another useful thing is how to show special characters in your type, but this is only visible if you are in normal view. And for normal view, I have to press W so I can see uh, all the grids and lines and the text frames. And if I have this and press Command Alt or so Control Alt I, I can see all these special characters. If I want to hide them, I can just press the same keyboard shortcut again. There's another useful thing you can do with your mouse, and that is to change the size of the frame and make sure all the text is visible inside the frame. So for example, if I make this frame less, so uh, not the whole text can fit into it, and then I double click on the bottom control point here in the middle, then InDesign will extend the frame size to make sure all the text is visible. It also applies to the corner points. So if I double click on this corner point, then InDesign will extend once again the frame. If my frame is bigger than the actual text, then I can double click on a corner point to again get rid of the unnecessary empty space in the frame. This is a very useful feature and can save you a lot of time. The next thing I would like to show is how to do drag and drop text editing. So let's just say you select some words or maybe this whole line and you want to drag and drop it into another part of your story. To be able to do this, you have to switch to the story editor view by default. And here you can do that by drag and dropping text from one paragraph to another or wherever you want to move it. But how can we do this in the layout view? There is an option in the preferences for this. If I press Command or Control K, we can go to the type options and here we can turn on enable in layout view, the drag and drop text editing. So if that's turned on, that now we can do exactly the same thing and drag and drop this text inside uh, the layout view. And the last thing I would like to show you, also saved me a lot of time, is how to use autocorrect to type very fast. So let me just show you an example. Let's just say I would like to start uh, my typing with InDesign and I just start typing with lowercase InDesign and I press space and InDesign automatically switches to um, changes the text to Adobe InDesign and also changes the case in the way it should be. So let me just show this again. I'm going to type, type in Photoshop. Just type in Photoshop space and it switches to Adobe Photoshop. Again, changes the case as well. So how do I do this? Very simple. This is again something that you can do under the preferences and by choosing autocorrect, just make sure that you use the language that you usually type in. So in my case, it's English and I have the enable autocorrect option. So this is turned on. And then here you can easily add something. So for example, let's just do the same thing with Illustrator. I'm going to start type in AI. Okay. And that will be next time if I type that and press the space. That will be changed to Adobe Illustrator. Maybe we can even write in CS6, for example. If I click on OK. This will be added to my dictionary. And next time if I type that, so let me just go here, AI space, it switched immediately to Adobe Illustrator CS6. You can imagine how much time you can save with this. And whenever uh, autocorrection is uh, enabled, it will also 
try to get rid of typos. So for example, a typical mistake is CNA should be CAN. So these are the things that people usually uh, misspell. And that's all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. I hope you found these features useful. Believe me, it can save you a lot of time if you get used to them. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time here on Vector Tats Plus.